Hi, this is part two of JavaScript, that is chapter three. And today we will discuss conditional or decision-making statements, just may have if, else if, else, or switch case. Uh, dusra topic hoga loops, just may have a for loops or while loops, or tisra topic hai functions. Jo bhi my examples aaj, uh, discuss karungi, uh, wo aapko description mein mil jayenge. Also, uh, you should practice these programs yourself uh, and do subscribe in case you haven't done so already. So we begin with conditional or decision-making statements in JavaScript. Now, there are times when you write code and you want it to perform different actions for different decisions. Now, for this, you can use conditional statements. Now, we have some conditional statements given here. There's if statement. There's else statement, there's else if statement, and there's switch statement. Now, let's look at the syntax of each of these. An if statement uh, has the syntax if the keyword if followed by a condition which is written inside a bracket. Now, the condition could be, uh, you know, less than a number or equal to equal to a string or number and then you have a block of code that has to be executed when this condition is true. Now, in this case, uh, there is no handling of the uh, statement in case this condition is false. The next one is the construct if else. In if else, we have the if condition, which if this is true, this block of code is executed. But if this condition is false, then it ignores this part and then it comes to the else part and the block of code after else will be executed. Now also be careful, uh, there is no condition to be given in uh, else. There is no condition to be given here. Then we get to the next uh, construct that is if, else if and else. Now in case we have a condition, after if, which if it is not true, uh, we can go and check another set of conditions in uh, an else if block. And you can have multiple else if blocks inside a construct. Now, in one construct, you can only have one if statement and one else statement, but you can have multiple else if statements. And then uh, only one block of code will be executed out of these, uh, the, this entire construct, only one block of code will be executed and that will be executed uh, considering whichever condition is true. Let's look at an example for if statement. Now, in this program, we are going to use a dialog box prompt, which is uh, one kind of a uh, way to interact with the user and take a user input in JavaScript. So we use the keyword prompt and in the bracket, we can give two uh, arguments. The first one can tell the user what to do. And the second one gives a default value, which we've taken 18 here. So we're going to tell the user to enter your age and we're going to tell them, uh, we're going to give them a default value 18. Now we have an if condition here, which checks if age less than 18, alert. Alert is another dialog box that can be used uh, to give a message to the user. You are, and we're using the plus sign as a concatenation and it will change the age also into string. So ye bolega, you are age years old to your variable mein jo bhi age store hua hoga, wo yahan pe aapko dikhai dega. So let's run this program. We are going to get a prompt. This page says, so this is the prompt. It says enter your age. Now this is the message that we had given to the user here and it's the same message. It is also giving us a default value 18 in the prompt. Now, if I click OK here, it's not going to give me any output because I don't have anything for uh, greater than or equal to 18. My condition is only to check less than 18 and give an alert. So let's run this again. And in the prompt, we are going to enter 17. Okay, and there it says you are 17 years old. So this alert 
uh, message will come only if the age is less than 18. We come to the next example where we are going to look at a confirm box and use the statements if and else. Now, in this case, we are going to take from the user an answer uh, which we've put in a variable a and s. Uh, we ask the user if they really want to cancel the order. Do you really want to cancel the order? And the box that will be shown here is called the confirm dialog box. So the confirm dialog box is going to interact with the user and take an output. Now, this output can have two values. One is true and one is false. So OK is supposed to be true and cancel will be false. So let's try this out and see what happens because, because we've got an alert for each of these uh, two conditions. Uh, let's check this out. So it says, do you really want to cancel the order? Now this comes from the message that we put inside the bracket and it gives us two boxes here, OK and cancel. So if I click on OK, it says your order has been canceled and I click OK. Now I'm going to run this again and we are going to click on cancel and it says wow you have changed your mind which comes from this particular alert in else because now the condition is false. We now look at an example of if else if else and here we're going to use a variable name to store uh, a user input which we will get using this prompt dialog box and we've prompted the user to enter your name. We are also using another object, date, and this is how you use this object, new is the keyword. And after that, we write date and the parentheses. So the date object takes the current uh, date and time uh, from your system and from this current date time, it will get the hours. So that's how this is going to work. And that will be stored in the variable time. So, jab ye sara kuch calculate kar lega hour of the day, to usko wo time mein store kar lega. Ab hum yahan pe ek aur variable le rahe hain, greeting. Aur ye specifically humara uh, message store karega. Now, we say if time less than 9, that means subay ke 9 baje se kam time hai, to greeting ko put it equal to good morning. Else if time agar 12 baje se kam hai, to greeting is equal to good day. Else if time is less than 16, then we say good afternoon. And ek humne else statement, jis mein koi condition nahi hoti, mene aapko pehle bhi bataya. Or is mein hum likhte hain, greeting is equal to good evening. Now, we are using the same variable. Ab charo jagah humne same variable use kiya hai. But this is okay because in mein se ek hi greeting uh, actually execute hogi. Because only one of these conditions can be true. So hum isko uh, run karke dekhte hain. Or enter karte hain name and we'll get a message saying hello Hadri, good afternoon. And if you see that the time here is 1306 on 2nd of March. So it's going to give the current uh, hour of the day accordingly it will take good afternoon. Next we look at the JavaScript switch statement. Now in switch statement you can select one of many code blocks just like we code in if else if else. So let's look at the syntax of switch. Uh, we will have the switch case which is evaluated only once. So this uh, particular statement with the keyword switch uh, has once to be seen and this expression could be either even a variable name or uh, some uh, you know calculation and the result of this is then matched to each of the case. If there is a match of the case then the code block will be executed and after that it will not go further in this particular uh, block of statements. In case the statement does not match then it goes on to look at the next case. 
and in case this does not match it goes on to the next and so on if none of these matches then it goes to default and the code block after default will be uh, matched let's look at some examples here we've taken two variables one is pin which we initialize as zero the other one is uh, the name of the city that the user has to input and we are going to use a prompt dialog box here to ask the user to enter the name of the city. We are going to use that string variables value uh, to change it to lowercase using this uh, method from the string object which we will do later in the course. Now this is to make sure that whatever the user inputs it changes it all to lowercase and then we can match it very easily with the names of the cities given in the case. Now in case it is Delhi, it will give the value of the pin as 110001 and otherwise it will assign this value uh, to pin. In case it's Kolkata, it assigns this value. In case of Chennai, it assigns this value. Now, in case it is none of these cities, it will go to default and put pin as not available. Now, we are going to use uh, another output statement document dot get element by ID dot inner HTML to which we are going to pass this uh, value that is demo, which is the ID of the paragraph here in HTML part, not in the script, it's outside the script. But to get into that inner HTML, we are using uh, document.getElementById and to that we're going to assign, we can assign multiple things, we can assign uh, the name of uh, our variable plus we can assign a message plus we can assign another value which is the number. Now this entire message is going to go and get uh, displayed inside this paragraph here, which is empty. Now let's run this program and check out how it works. So we are going to enter the name of the city in all caps and we'll check out how it outputs that. So it gives the name of the city and it gives the name of the pin code of that city. The next topic we we'll look at is JavaScript loops. Now loops are even, um, they're even called iterations. Iteration is another word which is used here. That is iterate or loop. Let's see how loops work. Now we always start with an initial value. Ek value li jati hai, uh, jo sabse starting value mani jayegi. Or ek value hogi final value. Now, between the first value and the last value, say that is 10, we have to keep incrementing to reach this value. That means, 10 bar hume increment karna hai to reach. Agar hum start karte hai 10 se aur hum ja rahe hai 1 pe, to har bar hume ye decrement karna chahiye. So, it also depends on what you want in the loop. So, जब भी हम ये state change करते हैं, हर बार वो ये check करता है कि final value obtained तो नहीं हुई. And if the final value is obtained, it will stop the loop. In case आपका loop uh, final value ऐसी है कि वो obtained हो नहीं सकती, in that case you will end up with an infinite loop. And we'll see an example of this. Now, we also can use uh, a while loop in different ways, the while loop we for loop ki tarah hi use ho sakta hai that it starts from one value goes up to the last value. But while loop mein hum aur bhi kaam kar sakte hai, hum file open kar sakte hai and while not end of file. Ab ye aapki syllabus mein nahi hai but I just want to explain to you ki agar hum file open karte hai to hum ye while loop laga ke ye dekh sakte hai ki end of file aya ki nahi. Or jab end of file a jata hai, then that status is obtained and we stop this loop. So if you want to run the same code repeatedly each time with a different value, you can use a for loop uh, in case you want uh, just a block of code to run a number of times. You can also use for in using an array. We can also use a while loop which will be used with a specified condition. Now, so do while, which is actually uh, 
similar to while, but the condition here is checked at the end of the loop. And we'll also look at break statements in loops and continue statements in loops. Let's start with a simple for loop. Now, in this, we're going to use a variable text and it's going to be an empty string. Now, this is done in JavaScript to store uh, some uh, group of numbers that will come from the for loop uh, and put them into our HTML part. Now, that's uh, actually a good thing to do. Otherwise, the entire script gets overwritten by whatever is coming from the for loop and uh, the original HTML document may not be seen on your website. So, here's a for loop which uh, we start with the keyword for. We're going to give an initial value so we can declare the variable inside the bracket itself, say where i is equal to zero, semicolon. This is the first statement inside this for loop. We can also say i is, e I is less than 10 or less than equal to 10, whichever way we want, and i plus plus. So i plus plus is actually going to increment i by 1 each time as we've done before. I had shown you in my last video how this operator works. Now, we also use this assignment operator. So what it will do is each time the value of text changes, it will take that old value and add more stuff that is this part to it and then assign it back to text. So each time a number that comes from the for loop will be stored here, added to the text and uh, the break statement, which is actually an HTML tag, will also be put inside the text. And so each output will come on a new line. So we want to put this in the in HTML part to so output there. We use the document get element by ID and pass the uh, ID of the paragraph demo here in a HTML. So remember, whenever we are writing a uh, function which has multiple words in it, the first word is all small. Uh, other than that, other words have title keys. And in inner HTML, HTML is all caps. So remember this, and then put it equal to text so you will get the output. Uh, let's uh, run this and see what the output will look like. So here's the output from this loop and you see that it starts from zero and it goes up to nine because we say less than 10 here. So that's why it does not go up to 10. Now, if we want, we can change these values, that is uh, the initial value and the final value. So let's try doing that. We can change the initial value here from 10 to say 30 and put an equal to sign here and put an equal to sign here. So now when we save and refresh this, we'll see that now the output starts from 10 and it goes up to 30 because we have less than equal to 30. So all our operators are coming in handy here. In this example, we can also take the value starting from 10 and going down to 0. And we have to decrement this. Also remember that when the value or initial value is bigger than uh, the final value here, then we need to change the sign of the operator. It has to be greater than equal to. It cannot be less than equal to. Uh, otherwise, we'll get an infinite kind of loop. And you'll see in the output, it starts from 10 and it goes down all the way to zero. So that's another thing that you can do with the for loops. Another thing that we can do is we can also find even numbers in a given interval. So to do that, we start with an even number and we go up to some other number, which can be even or odd, it doesn't matter. And we are going to use this last increment by two. So when we increment by two, it's going to uh, each time generate an even number. 
So this is a very simple way of doing this. We're going to save this and let's refresh this now. And we'll see that it starts from 10 and each time it's going to give us an even number right up to 30. To make this odd, we should start from an odd number. So we can start from 1 and uh, the same thing can work for even numbers. So let's save this and refresh it. We'll see that it starts from the first odd number, 1, and goes up to 29, which is the last odd number in this interval. So in an interval, we can find very easily the odd and even numbers using this. In case we want multiples in an interval, so we start from 0, go up to, or start from another number, which is a multiple of 5, uh, and go up to another number, any other number, and we can increment by 5. So we will get uh, multiples of 5 in this case. So this can be done with 3, it can be done with 7, you can do it with any number uh, and generate the multiples of that number. We'll now look at an example of for in loop. Now the for in loop is usually used with objects like arrays. So since we have arrays in our syllabus later on, I will just take an example with the variable lang, which is showing some computer languages. We have JavaScript, ASP, PHP, Python, and MySQL. Now to read this, we also use, uh, again, another variable text, which is an empty string to begin with, and we are going to store all the values in this variable again. We use for var x in lang. So this is the keyword. So there's keyword for, there's a keyword var, and then there's a keyword in. So we say for var x in lang. Uh, it's going to take each value of x as starting from zero. So these have index, which we'll come to later. This is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So it is going to take that value of x uh, because x uh, because lang is an array, it's going to read that array uh, one by one and output the entire thing using text. And when we run in the output, we get each of the elements from our array in different lines because we have put a break statement here. So it's going to display each of the, these on a new line. Let's look at the while loop in JavaScript. Now, in the while loop, we initialize before we actually start the loop, uh, which was done in the bracket after for loop. Here, we do it before the while loop. And in the while loop, we start with the keyword while. We check the condition here. And in the braces, in the end, we give the increment or decrement statement. Uh, so these three statements are now placed at three different places. Otherwise, it's similar to our for loop. Again, we are going to use the same output statement to put our output back into our HTML part of the document. So let's see the output of this while loop. So in the output of the while loop, we get uh, we start with zero and go up to nine. We'll now look at an example of a do while loop in JavaScript. And here we are going to initialize i as 11. We use the keyword do, and then we start this uh, while loop. And we're going to increment this variable in the last statement of this while loop. And after we finish, we will uh, when we close the braces, we write the while statement and check a condition. So we're going to start from 11, we're going up to 20, and we're going to output this using a document.write statement. So you see that in the output, it starts from 11. That's because we gave uh, an initial statement 11 here, and it goes up to 20 because our condition says less than equal to 20, and we are incrementing each time. Now, we're going to also try out something else here. So in case our while statement starts from 21, now, if it were any other loop, 
uh, it would have not taken place because if the initial value is 21 and we are checking in the loop that i has to be less than or equal to 20, it should not output anything. But in the while loop, because we're checking the condition afterwards, we'll see that this will still give us an output. So let's save this and check it out. So we'll see that it gives us an output 21 and then the while loop checks the condition and then stops the loop after 21. So this do while loop takes place once even if this condition is not satisfied and that's the difference between a do while loop and the while loop or a for loop. Let's look at another example of infinite loops. Now we begin by assigning uh, 21 to the variable x or while loop ke andar hum ek condition rakh rahe hain x greater than 20. Ab ye loop tab tak chalega jab tak ye condition true rahegi aur jab ye condition false ho jati hai tab ye loop band ho jata hai. But now we've given the value of 21 and we are incrementing that value each time. So, pehli baar wo 21 hai to ye true rahega. Next time wo 22 ho jayegi, agli baar 23. So, this condition will never be false. That means this condition will always be true. And that means that this loop will never end. And that means it becomes an infinite loop. We can see when we run this program, the loop keeps uh, going on and it's not stopping and that, that means that it's become an infinite loop. We come to the last topic, JavaScript function. And the function is a block of code designed to perform a particular task. Now, a JavaScript function is executed when something invokes or calls it. Other than that, it will never be executed. And they are useful because you can define the code once and use it many times. So now you can have the same code with different arguments which produce different results. So how do you define a function? We give it uh, the keyword function, give it a name. Uh, in the parentheses, we can give parameters. And within the code, within the braces after this statement, uh, we can give some code or a block of code uh, to be executed. And in the end, we can also give a return statement. Now, this is optional. That is, the return statement is optional. Uh, the parameters are also optional. Now, uh, the function name has to be given uh, normally, but in case uh, you're using an anonymous function, then you do not give this name and instead you put it equal to a variable. Uh, I've explained this uh, anonymous function in the first video that I gave on sample papers. So you can uh, go look at that particular part of that video. And this is a statement where we are calling this function. So if we don't call the function, it is not going to give us any output. Now, the other thing that has to be remembered is that if we have a return statement inside our function, then we need to use an output statement, some kind of an output statement, document.write, or we can assign a variable to this and then output that variable. But if we do not have a return statement inside the function, then uh, we should have some kind of an output statement inside the function so that when we call the function, we don't need to use an output statement. We're going to look at an example of a function which has no parameters or arguments and it has no return statement. We start by defining this function with the keyword function, give it the name my function one and here in the bracket, we have no parameters. So there are no parameters. And in this, we are taking an input from the user to enter your name. And we are just going to output hello with that name. Now, because it has an output statement here, we do not need a return statement. And even in the uh, way we call the function, we do not write any output statement and we do not pass any arguments here. So this is one example of how 
you can have a function which has no parameters and no return statement. Let's run this function. It says enter your name. I'm going to enter my name here and we'll see that the function has been called, so it's going to give an output. Let's look at a function with arguments and that uh, does not return the result. So we have uh, a function called my function two. Uh, we have document dot write x plus y. So we have two arguments here or parameters. And when we call this function, we don't need to give an output statement because we have an output statement inside and we have to pass these two arguments. Uh, six will go and give the value, assign its value to x. Eight will go and assign its value to y. So when we run this program, we will get an output 14, which is the sum of uh, these two arguments here. Let us now look at a function which has arguments and it also returns the result and we call it uh, the sum func and pass these three arguments to it. So we're going to use a return statement with a simple a plus b plus c and we can call it in two different ways. So we can call the function, pass these three values to it. So six will go to A, uh, four goes to B, three will go to C, and the values that are returned from this function will be stored in this uh, variable sum. And then we're going to uh, assign this sum to an output statement, which is going to go to ID demo one and output the result in this paragraph. And secondly, what we can do is simply call the function, pass the three arguments to it, and assign it to an output statement which has uh, ID demo2. So demo2 is the second paragraph where we'll get the output of the sum of these three numbers. So when we run this, we'll get the output 13, which comes from these three arguments. And we also get another output, which will come from these three arguments. Let us now look at the concept of global and local variables in JavaScript functions. Now we have a variable x, which is 55, y, which is 15. And these are declared generally in the script, not inside a function. Now, when we use an output statement and find the sum of these two, it will be output here in demo one. So the first paragraph will show the sum of these two numbers. Now we have a function here in which we have the variables x and y again, and we use a return statement x plus y. And what we are doing here is we are calling this function and uh, assigning that uh, output from this function to demo2. And so the output of the sum of these two will be uh, shown in the second paragraph. What we'll do is in the third paragraph, we again say x plus y and we'll see which values will be taken here. So in the output, we'll see that uh, the first two give us 70. So this statement is giving us 70. 140 comes when we uh, call the function and it outputs from the return statement x plus y. So it's going to add 140 and give us 140. And if we say x plus y again, it's not going to take these two values. Instead, it is going to take these two values and output uh, 70 again. So the local values that are within our function are not seen outside the function. They will only be returned by the function. And uh, so that is the concept of local and global variables in JavaScript. Now we see that there is another concept that you have given in your book, nested functions. Now nested function is what happens? If we declare function in one function, then we call it nested function. So, अब हमने इस nested function के अंदर एक statement दी है return a plus 5, जबकि a variable जो है वो outside वाले function में दिया गया है. तो that means that scope of the 
uh, variables in this function also apply to the nested function. So, जो भी वेरिएबल्स हम इस फंक्शन के अंदर डिक्लेयर करेंगे नेस्टेड फंक्शन में वो यूज किए जा सकते हैं एक और स्टेटमेंट अगर आप देखें तो उसमें हमने लिखा है रिटर्न नेस्टेड फंक्शन सो रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट में हमने फंक्शन को कॉल किया है दैट मींस दिस फंक्शन इज नाउ गोइंग टू बी एग्जीक्यूटेड एंड ये जो रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट है वो ये वाला रिजल्ट देगी सो so, ये रिजल्ट आ जाएगा यहां पे और जब हम इसको आउटपुट करेंगे तो आप देख सकते हैं कि आउटपुट में हमने लिखा है द फंक्शन रिटर्न्स माय फंक्शन सो हमने इस आउटसाइड फंक्शन को यहाँ पे कॉल किया है सो व्हेन वी कॉल दिस फंक्शन हियर इट इज गोइंग टू गो एंड कॉल दिस फंक्शन जो नेस्टेड फंक्शन है और वो नेस्टेड फंक्शन रिटर्न करेगा ए प्लस रन करते हैं तो हमारे पास आता है द फंक्शन रिटर्न टेन दैट ब्रिंग्स एस टू द एंड ऑफ पार्ट टू ऑफ जावा स्क्रिप्ट एंड आई एम श्योर यूर नाउ क्लियर विद ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट वी डिस्कस्ड डू स्टे ट्यून्ड फॉर पार्ट थ्री एंड ऑल्सो अनदर सेशन ऑन क्वेश्चन आंसर्स